Hello YouTube world. I just want to share with you a couple quick observations that I saw on TV the last few days. So this first clip is going to be about the Pope. This is on One America News and this is an interview with this uh, pastor in California that turned his church into a strip club to get around kind of the insane pandemic laws out there. If you haven't had a chance, check out a, go on YouTube and check out a clip of uh, of what this pastor did. It's pretty funny, actually. But uh, so moving on to this clip about the Pope, let's just go ahead and play it. I got to ask you this uh, real quick because it came out, I think, yesterday or day before. Um, this Pope, I know you're not Catholic. Uh, I'm non-denominational Christian. I, I sometimes wonder where he's coming from on some of these statements. And so the Pope just talking about these restrictions and the lockdowns and in favor of them and actually kind of chastising people who aren't following them. Your feelings yeah. on that? I think there's a lot of, of the Catholic faithful that are a little disappointed in uh, this Pope currently. Uh, they're, they honor him, but they're still not happy with him. And I can just tell you, and they always say the reason why there's Protestant ministers is because the position of Pope is already taken. Uh, but... But as a Protestant minister, I can tell you that, uh, that that's very disconcerting. He, he seems to be more of a mindset of a globalist than he seems to be as a shepherd of the scriptures. Because where the spirit of the Lord is, there's liberty. And, and the, the scripture says you'll know the truth and the truth will set you free. And the apostle Paul said, stand fast, therefore, in the liberty for which Christ has set you free in Galatians 3. So I think, uh, I think this pope needs to revisit the scriptures and understand the position of the apostolate. Yeah, well, I appreciate you pointing that fact out. It's kind of like the, the presidency and how the media has treated him. Uh, you can always respect the office. You can respect the position of the pope. You don't always have to. Okay, so this pastor is absolutely correct about the pope, that he's a globalist, and really everything that he's promoting right now goes against the Bible. And, you know, in this clip, uh, they're talking about the fact the Pope has been, this Pope Francis has been very pro-lockdown, uh, very in favor of all these pandemic restrictions and criticizing those who oppose it, which is not biblical at all. And if we look at the couple of Bible verses mentioned by this pastor, 2 Corinthians 3.17, that the Lord is that spirit and where the spirit of the Lord is, there is liberty. Uh, you know, it, it becomes real clear if we look at a few of these scriptures, John 8, 32, and you shall know the truth and the truth shall make you free. And then finally, Galatians 5, 1, stand fast, therefore, in the liberty wherewith Christ, Christ hath made us free and be not entangled again with the yoke of bondage. God wants for us to be free. He does not want us to be imprisoned and to be slaves of the government. So, what the Pope is doing in promoting and supporting these lockdowns and these crazy restrictions is not biblical at all, and it's going against God. And we've seen a lot of this the last several years. There's way too much to go through, but just a few more examples. A couple of weeks ago, um, October 21st, uh, we look at this headline, Pope Francis calls for civil union laws for same-sex couples. So obviously, this is not biblical. Uh, Leviticus 18.22, that shall not lie with mankind as with womankind. It is abomination. And then the New Testament, 1 Corinthians 6, nine, Know ye not that the unrighteous shall not inherit the kingdom of God? Be not deceived, neither fornicators, nor adulterers, nor adulterers, nor effeminate, nor abusers of themselves with mankind. So effeminate and abusers of themselves with mankind is referring to homosexuality. And, you know, that is just a law of God that homosexuality is against his law, and it's a sin. Um, you know, I have uh, relatives and friends that I grew up with that are homosexuals. I love them. I care about them. But the fact remains, it's a sin, and I can't promote sin. If someone asks me, is homosexuality a sin, I'm going to be honest and say, yes, it's a sin. Because that's what is written in God's, in God's word in the Bible. As humans, we don't have the authority or power to declare what is right or wrong, what is sin or, sin, what is sin or not sin. That is God's power, and God is the ultimate authority on that, and we can either agree with God or disagree him. 
you know, that's the way I see it. Um, I've spoken to a lot of men, that, a, a lot of gay men, a lot of lesbian women in the streets during street evangelism. And, you know, when they say that I definitely feel like I was born this way, I say, you know, we're all born as sinners. We all have a predisposition to certain sins, whether it be alcoholism, drinking too much, whether it be stealing, sexual immorality. So we're all predisposed to sin and, and born as sinners. And I just encourage them to pray to Jesus Christ and ask him to guide them, you know, concerning homosexuality and sexual immorality in general. Um, you know, another thing the Pope did last October, he hosted this Pachamama ritual, this paganistic ritual to Vatican, where we see... Uh, this large, uh, these large idols of this one pregnant woman with the bare breasts exposed. We see it right here. Um, a few more photos, um, you know, and they're literally worshiping these idols, um, as we see here, bowing down and worshiping these idols. So very pagan, completely unbiblical. You know, it would appear that this idol is probably in reference to Ishtar, Ashtoreth, Diana, who, you know, the queen of heaven from the Bible, whatever name you want to use, completely unbiblical. So we see this pope participating in a lot of unbiblical things and preaching a lot of things that are completely unbiblical and against God. And is the Pope the false prophet that, that the Bible prophesizes shall come to power in the end times? I don't know definitively. It sure looks like it could be that way. And let's read just a little bit about the false prophet. Revelation chapter 13, verses 11 to 14. And I beheld another beast coming out of the earth, and he had two horns like a lamb, and he spake as a dragon. And he exerciseth all the power of the first beast before him, and causeth the earth and them which dwell therein to worship the first beats whose deadly wound was healed. And he doeth great wonder, so that he maketh fire come down from heaven on the earth in the sight of men, and deceiveth them that dwell on the earth by the means of those miracles which he had power to do in the sight of the beast, saying to them that dwell on the earth that they should make an image of the beast which had the wound by a sword and did live. So we see the false prophet will work with the beast, the Antichrist, we see he does great wonders and miracles. He will call down fire from a heaven, from heaven, just as the prophet Elijah did. So many will be deceived by this false prophet who very well could be the Pope. Revelation 20.10, we see what the end result will be for the false prophet. And the devil that deceived them was cast in a lake of fire and brimstone with the beast and the false prophet and should be tormented day and night forever and ever at the end of the tribulation period. At the end of that seven years, after the battle of Armageddon, the beast, the, the, the Antichrist, and the false prophet are cast alive in a lake of fire. So I want to take a look at one more clip that kind of got my attention a few days ago. You know that insurance brokers are considered an essential business? We may look at a secular, soulless future where only insurers are around, like something out of Kafka. Yeah. So finally, yeah, I no. want to say this. We're, we're in the middle of a pandemic. It's, it may even be a biblical plague, Mark. It may even be a biblical plague, right? Wow. Right? So what can we do in the face of this? We can get together and we can pray. Right. And oddly enough, that's why... Let me roll that back and play those words again. about this how come a bar and a liquor store and a bike shop thing out of kafka yeah so finally yeah, i, I want to say this we're we're in the middle of a pandemic it's it may even be a biblical plague mark it may even be a biblical plague right so we're in the middle of a pandemic it may even be a biblical plague you know and this is this is fox news uh, where you're hearing this they're around like something out of kafka yeah so finally yeah, i, I want to say this we're, we're in the middle of a pandemic. It's, it may even be a biblical plague, Mark. It may even be a biblical plague, right? So we're hearing this even from doctors on the mainstream news. He's admitting we're in the middle of a pandemic. This may even be a biblical plague. We're in the middle of a pandemic. This may even be a biblical plague. 
you know, incredible that even on mainstream news, you're hearing a doctor uh, in, you know, this Dr. Siegel has promoted the vaccine, and everything, but even he is admitting that this may be a biblical plague. It is so very clear we are in the end times. You're even seeing evidence of this on the mainstream news. And here's just one place, Matthew chapter 24, where it, it refers to things like this whole pandemic, this whole uh, virus we have going on with the COV, the cove. And, uh, you know, this is Jesus speaking to disciples. Tell us when shall these things be and what shall be the sign of thy coming and the end of the world. And Jesus answered and said unto them, Take heed that no man deceive you, for many shall come in my name, saying, I am Christ, and shall deceive many. And ye shall hear of wars and rumors of wars. See that ye be not troubled, for all these things must come to pass, but the end is not yet. For nation shall rise against nation, and kingdom against kingdom, and there shall be famines and pestilences and earthquakes in diverse places, and these are the beginning of sorrows. So here it speaks of the pestilences and the beginning of sorrows. You know, in relating to the Pope, Matthew 24, 11, and many false prophets shall rise and shall deceive many. Matthew 24, 24, for there shall arise false Christs and false prophets and shall show great signs and wonders in so much that if it were possible, they shall deceive the very elect. And we're seeing this with the Pope. He's deceiving many. He's a false prophet. He's deceiving many. Is he that? Is he the false prophet? I don't know definitively. He very likely could be, and, you know. And here we see talking about the false prophets. They shall so great. They shall so show great signs and wonders. So it is so very clear we are living in the end times. You're even hearing evidence of this on mainstream news. You know, the most important question: Do you know Jesus Christ? Are you saved? Do you know where you'd go if you died today? And if you don't, I encourage you, seek Jesus Christ and pray to him today and get saved today. And, you know, it's very easy to get saved. I want to share with you exactly what I did, exactly what I did. This is the exact prayer that I used to get saved years ago. This is it. Just look up salvation prayer and just read it with me right now. It's this easy. You just pray this prayer each day and pick up a King James Bible and start reading out of the book of John. So let's just pray this together right now. Don't be ashamed out there. If, you, if you're uncertain about your eternal future and you've never seen Jesus Christ, just please humble yourself and do it with me today. What do you have to lose? And Say it with me right now. Dear God in heaven, I come to you in the name of Jesus Christ. I acknowledge you that I'm a sinner and I'm sorry for my sins and the life that I've lived. I need your forgiveness. I believe that your only begotten son, Jesus Christ, shed his precious blood on the cross at Calvary and died for my sins. And I'm now willing to turn from my sin. You said in your holy word, Romans 10, 9, that we confess the Lord our God and believe in our hearts that God raised Jesus from the dead. We shall be saved. Right now, I confess Jesus is the Lord of my soul. With my heart, I believe that God raised Jesus from the dead. This very moment, I accept Jesus Christ as my own personal Savior. And according to his word right now, I am saved. Thank you, Jesus, for your unlimited grace, which has saved me from my sins. I thank you, Jesus, that your grace never leads to license, but rather it always leads to repentance. Therefore, Lord Jesus Christ, transform my life so that I may bring glory and honor to you alone and not to myself. Thank you, Jesus Christ, for dying for me and giving me eternal life. Amen. You simply get on your knees and you say that prayer each day and go and pick up your, a copy. Go get a King James Bible and go to the book of John. It's the fourth book in the New Testament. And just start reading the book of John every day. Just start there, read the book of John, then then just start reading the other three Gospels. And I promise you, if you do those two things, if every day you get on your knees and you say this prayer of salvation, you're really seeking Jesus Christ, and you get a Bible and just start reading the book of John, I promise you and I guarantee you that you will be saved. So God bless everybody, and I'll talk to you real soon.